Caleb with Brown House here. And in today's video, we're going to be adding on to the How to Paint Your Firearm series by painting an optic. So we talked about doing this. Obviously, now we're going to go ahead and do it. OK, so I have this one taped up and I'm just going to kind of talk to you about how I taped it, why I taped it the way I did, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but first, let's go over the uh, PPE because protective equipment is very important. Uh, so for this, we're going to be wearing some iPro like we did in previous videos. Um, we have on some gloves, not just to protect our hands, but also the workpiece from our greasy fingers. I say our greasy fingers because um, my fingers are greasy. You just don't you don't want your greasy fingers, okay? All right, uh, respirator. And then we're going to be using some good ventilation. We have the spray booth here, pulling stuff. And even with the spray booth, even if you're spraying it outside, all of that stuff. As mentioned previously, you still want to have a respirator. All right, now that all that stuff's out the way, let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. So, painting an optic, um, you're gonna, we're using Aluma High 2, which is, you know, kind of what we've been using for this whole thing here. This is what the whole series we're doing is based on. And it is an air cure, so we don't have to bake any of this, which is good. Anytime you're, any of the other stuff you use, um, whether it be, you know, Cerakote, you know, whatever other coating you're using. I don't know what you guys are using. Uh, we're using Alumahide, all right? Uh, but point is, you don't want to bake your optic because if you're buying a good optic, uh, it has, it's sealed with some kind of gas on the inside and usually that stuff doesn't like to be heated to the temperatures at which uh, is required for your optic to cure for the amount of time that it needs to cure, okay? So everything we're going to be doing here is air cure, all right? And uh, we want to protect our glass, okay? So I'll just kind of show you how I taped it here. Up front, I just took some painter's tape, wrapped it around the front nice and even so that it, it doesn't look all wobbly whenever I take the tape off. I want my, my paint pattern to be nice and even around. And then I covered the glass so that we don't, we're not going to get any paint on our glass. And you can actually take this line and move it back further. You can shorten it up, you know, whatever you want to do for your case. Uh, like if you're using a scope cap and it fits on there pretty tight already, um, I would recommend, you know, taping the distance of that scope cap. You can even use scope caps to actually seal your, uh, your lenses here. So I know guys that have a bunch of different scope caps that they use just for painting. So those scope caps will have like 623,000 uh, coats of paint on them and because that's all they use them for all right and then we'll move back to the other end here i will uh i'll explain how i hung it here in a bit but we basically did the same exact thing back here uh, except what i did is i took the i took the like focus adjustment here opened it up taped around it tucked the tape under and then i'm closing this so that it's good and sealed there and then all these numbers here, plus the minus, the brown L's, the MPO, all that's going to be painted over. That's no big deal. Uh, if you want to keep those markings, just put a piece of tape over it. Um, I did cover up my numbers, my magnification numbers, as well as my line indicator. So I just put tape there where all that stuff is going to be. Um, and then, you know, the, the actual adjustment area here. I'm going to paint over that. Um, I did take the screw out um, for the, the, the lever for the throw. I pulled that out. I'm going to get a little bit of paint in there. That's no big deal. I don't care. Alumahide goes on super thin, so it doesn't matter. Uh, if you were using a traditional rattle can or something like that, you would want to block that area off because that stuff goes on thicker and it will mess up your threads. All right. Um, turret covers. If you have, uh, if you have, turrets that actually have indications on them and stuff you're going to want to take all, tape all that stuff off or a lot of those are removable you can just pull them off completely and then tape over you know the whatever's left there um, and then whenever you're done painting you just put those suckers back on that's the easiest way to do it uh, but these here are just just cap cap covers and what i want to make sure is that they're on loose but tighten down all the way. So just turn it till it stops. You want them to be kind of loose because whenever this is air drying, 
at about the 30 minute mark, I'm going to come up to it and I'm just going to break that seal. And I want it to be very easy to do. So I'm just going to break that paint seal because alumahide is a really hard finish and you don't want to weld these suckers on there. Um, you'll be able to get them off, but you risk taking a little bit of uh, paint chip off with it if you do it that way. So um, just do it the way I'm doing it. It'll save you a lot of headache. All right, and the illumination, the only thing I covered was the offsetting, so I can see when it's turned off. The numbers themselves, I don't really care about as far as the brightness goes. You can cover up each one of those, you know, do whatever you want to do, but I only covered up the offsetting so I can visually see, make sure it's turned off because uh, I'm, I burned these batteries out like crazy and I need to stop doing that. Uh, markings on the bottom. You can cover your serial number. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint over this thing. All right. And as far as taping off goes, that's really all about it. Uh, let's talk about how I'm gonna hang this thing now. So what I did is I taped the rear lens just as I did the front one. Then I made a loop with my wire. You can kind of see it under there. I, I made a big ring with the wire, set it on top, and then taped the wire to the tape. Don't tape your wire to your lens. That's how you scratch your lens. This is black iron wire, okay? So just be smart about it. This is a good way to do it. Um, like I said before, you know, there's guys out there that use scope caps. You can run this through the scope cap. Just make sure you protect your lens and that works as well. All right. So what we're going to be doing, if you remember the gun we painted the camo pattern on, which I'll have it back out here in a bit whenever I'm finished with this. We're gonna be putting this on that gun, so we're gonna to wanna to match that pattern. So remember our base coat was wolf gray with a dark parkerizing gray over the top of it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do on this. But on the other gun, you remember that I speed cured it by baking it before I did my camo pattern. Um, we're not gonna do that because I don't wanna wait 10 to 14 days to finish this video. I wanna, I wanna do it now, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm not going to teach you how I did the camo pattern. We already have that video. You know how it's done. I'm going to paint my base coat. I'm going to wait about 10 minutes um, or till it's dry to the touch, right? Then I'm going to put my camo pattern over it and then I'm going to spray my camo pattern. Remember, because within 30 minutes of your first coat is whenever your additional paint needs to go on or after it's fully cured. So we're going to get it in there within that 30 minute window. And I'm going to go ahead and start painting now. You guys can watch me paint and then uh, I'll see you back here when it's done.
All right, so that is all there is to it. Um, some things we didn't cover that I feel like they're, that are important to mention. Um, we didn't do the optic mount. You can, however, do the optic mount. That's no problem. Uh, for this, we had a Reptilia OS mount on here, but I'm just gonna leave it black because I have a lot of black furniture still on this gun and it'll contrast well. Um, if you do, or well, I should say this, I did get paint, obviously, where the rings are gonna mount to the optic. With Alumahide, that's okay. Uh, this stuff goes on really hard and it doesn't go on super thick, so you can you can do that. Uh, it's still, you're not gonna have any uh, issues holding zero or anything like that. I've done this before, hadn't had any issues. It's perfectly, perfectly okay. All right, so I'm gonna set this down here. All right, and if you do paint the optic mounts separate from the optic, um, again, where it mounts to the scope, usually there's really no issue with, uh, with getting spray where the inside of the ring mounts to the scope. However, if I have a painted optic and then I'm going to paint the optic mount separate, I usually still tape the inside of it. I haven't tried not doing that. It's just like something in my brain says, don't do it. So I haven't done it yet. And, uh, but the way I do it, I've had great results. So I'm just going to honestly keep doing it that way. Um, and if you have the scope mounted in the optic mount and you paint them all as one, that's okay. Just know that if you pull the scope out of that optic mount and you put a pretty heavy coat of alumahide on there, just know that you can run into some issues with chipping there. Um, which is why I just prefer to paint everything separate anyway, because if I change the optic, now I don't really have to worry about the optic mount pattern not matching the actual optic itself, if that makes sense. All right, so uh, that is how you paint optics. And we even threw a little camo pattern on there to match our rifle. So if you have any questions or comments or you need any help with this stuff, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave some comments down below, tips, tricks, you know, whatever, uh, because I know a lot of y'all out there are knowledgeable about this too, so spread the knowledge. All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.